Um, so now we're going to the third presentation, all the way north to the Kalayan Islands, uh, by Cynthia Layusa of Isla Biodiversity Convers Conservation. Uh, Cynthia, I think you're live uh, here. Uh, let's try if you can share your own presentation. Maybe that'll go better with the quality. Um, host, Gina, can you share or, or Cynthia, are you able to share your screen? You should have the rights. She has to start her video first. Um, her video's off. Okay, here we go. She's on. Hi, Cynthia. Cynthia, you're uh, still muted. Hello? Yes. Hi, there you I can't see my sticky. I can't see um, my. I can't seem to share properly though. Gina, did you make her a co host? Yes, she, she is. She is a co host, yes, so she can share. Press Alt to show the controls. Alt or Escape. Sorry? Alt, uh, can you speak back? It's not showing all of my um, desktop view. Alt F. Try Alt F. No. Um, so, pass it's okay, William, for you to share yeah, the video. I'll just uh, share it. Yeah. Let's try a different uh, one. See if I can share only the PowerPoint instead of my whole screen. That might have been the problem earlier. Just share the file, maybe? Yeah, let's try. Um, share. And then just that one. Good afternoon, I am Santa Leusa from an NGO called Isla Biodiversity Conservation and I am here to tell you a story about the Kalayan whale. Our story will take us to the Babuyan group of islands in the northernmost Philippines. By itself, the island group has some amazing features already. The islands are volcanic in origin and they have never been connected to any landforms. It also has one of the youngest islands the Didicas Island, which was formed only in the 1950s after a volcanic eruption. The Babuyan group of islands is home to several species. There are more than 190 birds, including Philippine endemic, near endemic species, and migratory birds passing from Japan to their wintering grounds. But it was in 2004 when the Philippines and the Babuyan Islands specifically rocked the birding community because of the Kalayan whale, a species of bird that has never been described to science before. Most of the people on Kalayan Island grew up already knowing about the Kalayan whale, which they call peeding. But in 2004, the rest of the world get to know about this tri species of whale found nowhere else but on the island of Kalayan. This scientific discovery impressed the world, especially because the new discovery of a large vertebrate species at this day and age is considered by scientists and conservationists as uncommon. But one of the things that is unique to the Kalayan Rail is that it is only found in this very small island. Kalayan Island is one of the five major islands in the Babuyan Islands, but it is the only one that has the Kalayan Rail and this island is only 196 square kilometers. Kalayan is only slightly, slightly bigger than Quezon City. Parang QC plus Makati ang laki, but without the building and concrete. I think it, it may be hung. 
The Kalayan rail thrives in primary and secondary lowland forests and forest over limestone. It is a forest generalist, meaning as long as there's a forest, it can survive. The Kalayan rail can be distinguished from other rails by its red-orange peak with a yellowish tip, reddish legs, and dark olive-brown body. While other rails have distinct white bands on their faces or bodies, the Kalayan rail's white bands are hidden under its wings. In 2011, we documented the Kalayan rail nest and found three pinkish-colored eggs on its nest on the ground. And in 2014, a crew was able to see a chick and its aggressive parents. A quick fact. The beak of the Okinawa rail chick has a white tip, but it disappears after 10 days. Gets us wondering if this is the same as the peeding, considering that the chick that Doc Nielsen, Adrian Constantino, and Jamarinon saw has that white tip as well. Because of the lack of information and its confinement to a small island, the Kalayan rail was given a vulnerable status by the IUCN. But for the updating of the Philippine Red List of Threatened Terrestrial Species published in 2009 by DNR, we recommended that the Kalayan Rail be given an endangered status, and this was adopted by the Philippine Red List Committee or PRLC. We have reasons for recommending the listing of the Kalayan Rail to endangered specifically because of its small habitat range and the existing threats to the species. I'll tell you all about these in a bit. Since 2005, we have been conducting the Kalayan Rail Census Survey to monitor the population of the Kalayan Rail. And since 2011, an all Kalayano team has been spearheading the survey. The survey starts in June or July, but depending on the weather, the local situation, and our finances, it may extend up to August or September. We conduct our surveys along established census stations situated at or near food trails around the island. Shown in this table are the number of stations surveyed per year. The low numbers for 2005, 2007, and 2008 is because we concentrated the survey to the west central part of the island due to logistical constraints. But from 2011 onwards, we established additional survey stations to cover more part of the forest, and we have been consistently surveying around 670 stations per year. Apologies because I haven't included the 2016 data yet because we are still validating the survey results for that year. If you recall last week's ostrich escapade in Queso City, my colleagues and I found out that the weight of one adult ostrich is equal to 568 Kalayan rails. So naturally, we became interested to see how many ostriches the Kalayan Island could hypothetically have. Based from our annual census surveys, the highest maximum count of rails observed during the survey was in 2018, with 403 individuals. Kulang pa rin sa ostrich. Well, one of the theories for the high 2018-2019 numbers is the extended survey that went on until the end of August or early September, wherein by this time the juveniles may also have been responding to the peeding playback. However, if we consider species distribution modeling scenarios, we project at least a minimum of 3,000 rails in the wild. So, mga anim na ossages. The relative abundance has been stable with 4 rails in every 10 stations. We also computed for the extent of occurrence by drawing a line across stations with positive rail detections. The extent of occurrence is approximately 97 square kilometers, corresponding to about 50% of the island's total land area. The area of occurrence, represented by 103 grids you see in this map, is at 83 square kilometers. Imagine, the extent of the occurrence of the Kalayan Rail is equal to the size of two Pasig cities. But apart from its small extent and the area of occurrence, the Kalayan Rail is faced with other issues that threaten its population. First, the Kalayan Rail is threatened by hunting with the use of snares. Based on interviews, one hunter could capture at least 60 rails a year. The Kalayan Rail ranks 6 of the 10 frequently hunted species on the island 
and hunting is done mostly for food sustenance. Snaring is the most common method used to hunt a Kalayan whale, and snaring is frequently done between March to May, which corresponds to the breeding of the Kalayan whale, and between September to December, corresponding to the movement of migratory birds. It is worthy to know that majority of hunters start hunting before the age of 13. The second threat to the Kalayan rail is the nuding habitats, wherein the forest on the island is being cleared primarily for agriculture. A study on the land use change between 1979 to 2006 revealed that the island has lost 8% of its forest cover. The remaining forest is at 112 square kilometers. The trend of encroachment is slow yet upward towards the forest. And thirdly, a study conducted by Lassica in 2018 shows that introduced cats are still a potential threat to the species. Domestic cats can roam the forest and can leash the wildlife sanctuary's protection zone. Feral cats have also been observed on the island. We know from examples from other rails and insular species that cats are one of the leading causes of bird extinctions in the wild. So what does this tell us? It shows us that the Kalayan rail has a very small forest habitat, an even smaller extent in area of occurrence, a wide but patchy distribution, and it is persistently being threatened by hunting habitat loss and potentially by introduced species as well. This is why we have been lobbying for the uplisting of the status of the Kalayan rail from vulnerable to endangered so that it can get its much deserved conservation attention and funding. What we know now does not end our quest to know more about the Kalayan rail. On the other hand, it shows us what we still do not know about the species, what we still need to do, and the opportunities that can be had in terms of the research and conservation of the species. We still have a lot to do in terms of research and monitoring, and we would love to do more ecological, behavioral, and modeling studies so that we can update our knowledge and influence the proper management of the Kalayan rail. There is also opportunity to pursue conservation, education campaigns, and advocacy work on the island, particularly to build on the management plan of the locally established wildlife sanctuary. Our volunteers have always been our local champions on the island. The fact that the rail survey has been ongoing through an all Kalayano team effort proves that our community-based research and conservation program can be sustained. We appreciate that even more now that we are in a lockdown and yet the survey can still go on. Much of our survey has been dependent on our volunteers and it would be appropriate to afford skills development alternative livelihood opportunities for a local team so that they can sustain their interest in the project. And also, we see opportunities for collaborations and partnerships. We are learning from the experiences of the Okinawa Rail Conservation Research Program, and we are learning from the good practices of other organizations in the Philippines like the success story of the Philippine Kakatu and Palawan and other organizations represented here as well. And with that, I would like to invite you to be part of our work. You can help support us by volunteering, donating to our cause, or buying our merchandise. We are seeking cash and in-kind donations to help sustain our research and conservation work in the Babuyan Islands. But specifically because of this pandemic, we are asking you to help us raise funds for the schools in the Babuyan Islands. As the schools shift to a modular approach in learning, the teachers need your donations to help them purchase bond papers, printer inks, and other school and medical supplies. Before I end, I wish to thank everyone who has been involved in the Kalayan Rail project, most especially our team from Kalayan, our volunteers and donors, and the LGU. Thank you to the Wildberg Club of the Philippines for this chance to talk about the Kalayan Rail and to the audience for taking the time to listen. You can visit our website at isa.org.ph if you want to learn more about our project and if you wish to support our program. Marami salamat po. All right. Thank you so much, Cynthia.